All right, so in the last video, we introduced this idea of the absolute or, or global extreme values for a function, right? Um, so the, these are the largest y values or smallest y values that are attained by a function on its domain, right? So in this example here, right, this y value here at the endpoint is, is the smallest that we see. This one up here at this cusp, that's the largest that we see, right? Um, every other y value for the function is somewhere in between, okay? Um, and we also looked at these other examples. We said, oh, you know what? These aren't guaranteed, right? We could have, we could have a function like this or like this um, where, where we don't actually see those absolute max values. And so then you get wondering, like, when, when do you actually get these extreme values, right? We'd like to find them, but before we go trying to find these values, we want to know that they're there, right? It, we don't want to be like that situation where, like, you know, maybe you, when you were younger, you were, like, annoying your dad one day. And so he said, hey, kids, you know, there's, there's a chocolate bar hidden somewhere in the basement, right? But there wasn't any damn chocolate bar. He just wanted to get rid of you. And you keep searching and searching and getting more and more annoyed as you realize that probably that thing's not actually there. Um, it's not the situation that we want to be in when we're doing calculus. So how can we be sure before we do any work that these values exist? Because then it makes sense to go looking for them. Okay? So the extreme value theorem gives us some conditions, fairly reasonable conditions under which we can guarantee the existence of these values. Okay? So the extreme value theorem says that if our function f is continuous on a closed interval, from A to B, then there are guaranteed to exist values, let's call them maybe C1, C2, in A, B, such that F of C1 is less than or equal to f of x for all x in a b and f of c2 is bigger than or equal to f of x for all x in a b okay so the extreme value theorem guarantees that, that your function has these bounds, right? So there's an upper bound and there's a lower bound. Uh, but it says more, not only do you have these bounds, but they're actually attained, right? So there will be values in the interval where you actually achieve these bounds, right? So this f of c1, right? That's your absolute minimum, your smallest value. f of c2, that's your absolute maximum, your largest value. And it's very important here that the interval is closed and the function is continuous, right? Otherwise, it's, it's not very hard. Maybe like over here, we could fill in that point. We could define it there, right? Make that, make that our domain, right? Here's a function which is defined on a closed interval, but it doesn't have a maximum or a minimum. I guess I have to redefine it here. Maybe it's defined there or something like that, right? Um, so maybe the function is defined on a closed interval, but it's not continuous on that interval, right? It has a jump discontinuity, removal discontinuity, right? Um, so it's def because it's not continuous, we can still have this situation where we don't actually achieve a max or min value, right? Or, or we might have a function which is continuous on its whole domain, but the domain is not a closed interval, right? There's a gap in the domain. Um, that could happen as well. Um, so we see that there are, if you like, some violations. Well, they're not violations of the theorem, but if you drop either of these two conditions, you are no longer guaranteed a maximum or a minimum. Okay? But under these conditions, which are pretty typical conditions for a calculus problem, you're guaranteed that the maximum and the minimum exist. And once you know they exist, then we can start talking about techniques for looking for those max and min values. And we'll talk about that in the next few videos.